Hello everyone, my name is Sovereign, and welcome back to World of Matchmaking Failures. Or Matchmaking Wins in my perspective, because look at this matchmaking. Look at it. I am actually top tier in my tier 8 light tank. There is no tier 9s. The, the light tanks, the tier 8 light tanks are the tier 9s. And even then, matchmaking failed. Because we have four tier 8 light tanks, which are technically tier 9 mediums, if, if you'd go at matchmaking weight. And the enemy has three tier 8 light tanks. So well done, matchmaking. You messed up again. And seeing as I'm technically top tier in my tier 8 light tank with only one artillery, I'm going to be extremely aggressive over the midridge. On, on the map, I really, really, really hate in every single tank in the game. Even light tanks, because if you're a light tank, your team usually camps in the back because there is artillery. So heavy tanks and tank destroyers are not going to push up because they will get constantly shat on by the artillery. So that leaves the light tanks and the medium tanks to fight over the midridge. But because the heavy tanks and tank destroyers are camping in the back, no one will really have shot. So it takes 10 to 12 minutes for the medium tanks to finally have done something enough for the heavy tanks and tank destroyers to push. And by then it's just too late and the match is just too long. I have some suggestions on how to fix this map, but that would mean that Wargaming has to listen to me. And Wargaming or you doesn't listen to anyone from EU, so I'm not going to bother. But luckily in this match there are not a lot of heavy tanks, there are not a lot of tank destroyers. It's mostly medium and light tanks, so this match should be over relatively fast if we can be extra aggressive. Because, as I've mentioned, there will be tanks camping in the back, but not a lot of them. You won't have 15 shots come in when you poke over. Instead you will have 3, maybe 4 and they have a high chance of missing you if I am fast, and I am a small target in this tank. Now, speaking of tanks, last Sunday, I uploaded a video that some of you in the comment section have referred to as tank porn. And I agree, that is definitely tank porn. It is... I had a lot of fun making that... Not, not in that way, in editing it and making the different angles work while filming it and stuff. Someone asked about the free camera mod, I will do a short video on that in not too long. I'll wait for 9.15 to come out and all the mods to update, and then I will do a video on that. It won't be long, like a 3 minute video on explaining how to do everything and stuff. That mod only works in replays, so you can't be all like, well, I'm just gonna sit in this bush, get my free camera mod in, and fly over the battlefield to see where everyone is in a random match. No, it just only works in replays. But not only do I hope that you enjoy the videos, but also that you actually get something out of it. Like, I haven't done a lot of mod spotlights, this is the second so far, but I hope that you actually considered getting a tank skin for your World of Tanks tank game. I'm so good at commentating. Because, for example, the T62A is a nice HD model, but having that tank skin over it, it doesn't change the hitbox. The tank basically has the same shape underneath all the extra details, and it just makes the tank look more pretty. Like, for example, it looks more like the T55A with all the extra bits stuck to the side and the 91 on the back and the tank armor patches on the front. It doesn't add anything to your gameplay, it just looks absolutely ridiculously awesome. I don't know if I mentioned it in the video, I think I did. I actually used the M41 Black Dog skin that he made because I just like that model more and I like the glowy bits on the, on the end. I, I, like it. I like the glowy butt things. Which is kind of ironic to say, because in the replay mod pack that I use, I don't have the M41 Black Dog skin. However, the second replay of this video is an M41 Black Dog without the skin from Milky Man. Also, spoilers, the next replay is an M41 Black Dog. Um, spoiler. I was also going to do a zoom mod for a mod spotlight. But I cancelled that because the moment I thought about doing it, Wargaming announced that they would add a zoom function themselves into the base game in patch 9.15. And, and guess what recently came out? Yeah, pa patch 9.15. And sadly enough, Cuddles Bear died. Cuddles Bear went really aggressive into the ditch and he was screaming for his life multiple times and the team saved him multiple times, but sadly enough, he still died. Nothing we can do about it, except for carry this game. And with carry this game, I mean do more damage because we don't really have to carry. We're winning massively. The enemy team made some mistakes in their game and uh, our team took advantage of it. Yeah, there's nothing really else to say. It was This was one of the few games where the Prokhorovka game doesn't last 10 minutes before something happens. And while I have this T28 tracked in position, he has used his repair kit. He can go nowhere. I keep shooting him in the track. And this has basically shown how you can take massive advantage of being top tier in your tier 8 light tank in a tier 8 game. Matchmaking should really not let this happen. 
but I took full advantage of it. I take the shot from the light raid. I know that I can take a shot from him and I can kill him. That SU-1-244 is somewhere probably on the island. I don't really care at this point. I've got my top gun. And there he is on top of the hill on the island waiting for his team to die so he cannot support anyone. Uh, I don't care. I, I really enjoyed this game. Hot damn, is that music funky. And welcome back on Pilsen. I've shown a couple of replays on Pilsen. One where I lose a Lorraine carry and it hurt. But fighting back the tears, this is Slarty Bartfart in his M41 Black Dog Girlfriend. And it's not using the skin, like I said. And the M41 Black Dog Girlfriend, let's just call it the Black Dog or the Black Girlfriend. No, I can't do that. I cannot call uh, forget about that. <coughs> the Black Dog is the very first tier 8 light tank in World of Tanks. World of Tanks, it has been released 5 years ago in Europe, now has the first tier 8 premium light tank. Released in combination with the Wargaming League Grand Finals. Yes, it has the logo splattered all over it. Skin, previous video, go watch it. Ooh, plug, plugs everywhere. And the Black Dog is basically what the T49 could have been. A walker bulldog with a 90 millimeter gun however this one has a german version because some reason they gave it to germany instead of america probably because america sold it to the germans and the germans was like we can put a 90 millimeter gun on it i wanted to go in game and check the vehicle details to see if it was actually like that but it just says the german version of the american m41 bulldog so just go with the German stole it and slammed a 90mm gun in there instead of a 76 pew pew gun. So why am I showing a Black Dog replay right after an RU251 replay? Well, if you cannot add up 1 plus 1, I'll tell you why. Because the answer is 4. You can compare the two. They're both tier 8 light tanks from the German tech tree. So that means a few things. The crew is interchangeable between the RU251 and the Black Dog. They both have no armor, they both have roughly the same gun, 240 damage, the RU has 190 millimeters of penetration, whereas the Bulldog has 182. The DPM is slightly higher on the RU251, but the shell velocity is lower on the 251. But shell velocity is an issue on every single light tank from the German tech tree, because the SP1C, the Black Dog and the RU251 all have really, really slow shell velocity. This could be a balancing reason because of the high DPM. The RE251 has 2750, the Bulldog has 2585, and the SP1C has a fairly interesting 3 clip autoloader. And even if you don't use the autoloader on the SP1C, you get 2159 DPM. The shell velocity on the RU is 805, the Bulldog is 830, and the SP1C is 630 meters per second. On the T54 Lightweight, you get almost 900 meters per second but your dpm is the lowest even lower than the sp1c at 2085 so it could be a balancing reason to have slow shell velocity that's a really difficult word to say try to say it really fast three times in a row really slow really slow velocity. there you go try it and if this all went too fast for you and the numbers are confusing i'll just give one tip if you're driving a high tier german light tank when shooting at an enemy tank that is driving give it a lot of lead. Now as a non-English speaking person, I mean, my mother tongue isn't English, it is my second language. Speaking English a lot makes me think of the words sometimes. Like I, I think about words a lot, for example, car. The word car in Dutch is auto, which means auto, which means automobile, which makes sense. But why is it an auto? It doesn't drive itself, at least not yet. But car, where does the word car come from? Because car Right, I've googled it and the word car came from the word carriage, but where did the word carriage come from? Because carriage, you carry stuff, but where did the word carry come from? Who decided, hmm, the word for picking up someone and taking them with you is the word carry? Where did that meaning come from? Like, it, it has no real meaning, but that's the whole point of words having a meaning. For example, how did someone come up with the word leg? Why did they think, hmm, this attachment to the bottom of my thing is called a leg now? That it's attached to it's attached to my stomach. Yes, that's a word I can use, stomach. How did people come up with words? For example, we have to find a new word for that thing in the sky. Let's call it a moon. Why can't we call it fwebloop? Moon sounds easier and it's easy to spell instead of fwebloop. How? How did this 
This is what I do in my free time. I think about the difficult things in life. Or for example, you drop something, you have one of two reactions. You brace for impact, you close your eyes, you pull a weird face, or you decide to, I can do something about it and maybe catch it with my foot and just boot it right out of the window. But some people have an extra reaction with bracing for impact. They close their eyes, they pull their face away, and they start waving their hands back and forth. Like, where does the waving your hands come from? Where in the human psyche does that help you brace for impact? I'm going to start waving my hands a bit. Yes, that will help me survive in this situation. Or when you get scared, your hands fly up in the manner of trying to protect yourself, but your hands are waving all over the place, and except for actually protecting your face or your body, they are just somewhere flailing in the air to the left and right of you. Now that can go back to the time when we were still Neanderthals. If you get scared, that means something is probably attacking you, so you have to look bigger than you are, so the thing that is attacking you thinks, Oh, I'm not gonna attack that, that's pretty big effort, bye! And that little prehistoric part in your brain is also the reason we are scared at night, because it's dark. We are scared because we don't see anything, and because it's dark, there can be something luring in the darkness. For example, a saber-toothed tiger. Now that's something we don't really have to be scared of nowadays. Nowadays we have to be more scared of little tiny spiders half the size of your pinky nail. But hey, reasons. People have phobias. Or you can be scared of the murderer that's hiding in your closet and is just waiting for you to fall asleep so he can slit your throat. I have happy thoughts. But that is my thought process when I'm bored. I start thinking about the different things in life. Another example. Why do we cry? And I mean cry with tears. Animals cry, they whimper. You've probably heard a dog whimper. Like, I, I'm not going to make the sound, but you've heard it. But it doesn't have tears. A human, when he gets sad, cries with tears, like actual droplets of fluid coming out of the little tubes underneath and above your eyeballs. Now that is a thing that hasn't really been decided yet. There's multiple hypotheses about this. And some people think it is to keep your eyes moist because they could be reasoned dry out or something when you get sad. Other people think it is to distract you from the fact that you are sad because you're so busy wiping the tears off your face that you get distracted from what is actually happening. If you're watching a movie, for example, someone you love dies, hashtag Game of Thrones, and you start crying because you're sad that that person died. Now, now you have to start wiping all those tears off your face and out of your eyeballs and get them unwatery again so you get distracted of what is happening on screen for that moment and then you see what's happening again and the whole story starts over. Now the extra weird part is if you are crying, if you had a dog for example, you are crying, the dog sees you, the dog tries to comfort you because dogs apparently can feel if you are sad, happy or dead. Whoa, that was dark. Anyway, they will lick the tears off your face. So dogs recognize tears are a thing that are sadness in people and try to get them away. So dogs distract you. Or I'm talking complete and utter bull plop out of my ass. And this is all a lie. However, I, this is what I do in my free time. The other thing I do in my free time is make YouTube videos. And I'm terrible at it because this whole game I have commented on nothing of it. This this whole game has went by and I said nothing about it. I, I basically said Slarty Bartfart is playing in his M41 Black Dog and that was it. And right now this game is almost over. He gets the reset on both of the ISs. They cannot see him because their view ranges are terrible. And Slarty Bartfart only has to just fire his gun constantly at the IS3. The IS3 who cannot figure out where the shots are coming from and doesn't have a repair kit. And Slarty Bartfart doesn't miss a single shot from this point on. Every single shot will hit, and he will win the game. Light tanks can certainly carry games, if you know what you are doing, if you stay safe. You can take a shot or two, but you have to stay safe. You can kill everything, you have the mobility, all you have to do is hit your shots.